Atlantis, like the other shuttles, is 122 feet long, 56 feet tall, and 78 feet wide. That's the wingspan. Factors that were calculated as the uh, engineers designed its route and the path that it uh, traveled today from the Vehicle Assembly Building at Kennedy Space Center to the Visitor Complex. In order to make this happen, they had to remove 56 traffic signs, 120 light poles, 23 traffic signals, and one high voltage line. And of course, everything will be put back into place. Here we see some of the exhibits uh, depicting the future of NASA's human spaceflight program uh, that NASA will be uh, pioneering and championing along with our commercial partners. The commercial crew program is well underway. NASA's commercial crew partners will be taking astronauts to the International Space Station. Already, SpaceX has delivered cargo to and from the uh, space station. And meanwhile, you can see the Orion capsule NASA is developing that will go into space aboard the Space Launch System, a towering heavy lift rocket that will be ready for its uh, first flight in the coming years and the Orion capsule will be making its first test flight in 2014. Together the SLS and Orion are going to expand human presence beyond low Earth orbit and enable new missions of exploration across the solar system. Atlantis and its sister shuttles will remain in museums for years to come, icons of human spaceflight, a 30-year tradition, and they will serve as inspiration and educational tools for generations of future space explorers. There were five space shuttles that flew into space and the prototype space shuttle Enterprise that pioneered the approach and landing tests and proved the ability of the space shuttle to land and descend through the atmosphere. Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Endeavour, and Atlantis together traveled over 542 million miles and were in space more than 1,334 days. They also carried 355 different individuals into space. Many uh, Many flew multiple times, so there were a total of 852 seats taken during the 135 space shuttle missions. Of the 355 individuals, 306 men and 49 women flew aboard shuttles. Sally Ride became the first American woman in space when she flew aboard Challenger in 1983. The youngest person ever to travel in space on the shuttle, Sultan bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. He was 20 years 
11 months and 21 days old when he flew on Shuttle Discovery in 1985. And the oldest person to fly in space, John Glenn, who was 77 years old when he flew on Discovery uh, on the STS-95 mission in 1998. The only astronaut to have flown on all five shuttles that flew in space is Story Musgrave. Astronauts Jerry Ross and Franklin Chang Diaz share the record for having flown the most space shuttle missions with seven each. And astronaut Mike Fink, who holds the record in space for the most cumulative time for an American astronaut, was the, the final first time flyer on the shuttle. He has the distinction of entering a space shuttle for the first time from on orbit from the International Space Station. He flew missions aboard Russian Soyuz capsules before uh, ever flying on the space shuttle. So the space shuttle era is coming to a close as space shuttle Atlantis makes its final trek to its final destination, but NASA and its commercial partners will continue the mission of human space flight, turning the page and going back to explore further than we ever have before.
Can I come up just briefly? Space Shuttle Atlantis has now departed Exploration Park and turned on to Space Commerce Way. It's expected to take about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes before it reaches the intersection of Space Commerce Way and State Road 405. State Road 405 is the road on which the Kennedy Visitor Complex resides. And then by about 6 p.m. Eastern Time, Atlantis is expected to pull in front of her new home, the $100 million complex that is under construction and due to open July of 2013.